this week, Robbie and the guys from Anderson Marine came over to help tame the beast that is the Dark Falcon engine. That beautiful golden machine that Robbie has his feet on is the engine. The Dark Falcon is powered by a 50-year-old Perkins 4.236V marine diesel engine. In fact, the engine's so old that when people ask me for the serial number, I just tell them that it's probably number one. But since the engine room is such a gigantic mess, let's take a step back to show you what the engine is. Now, this clearly is not the Dark Falcon's engine, because it isn't gold. But let's take a look at this fancy white one, which is the same configuration as what's on the boat. There is a ton of history around these motors, which were converted to be used in small trucks, generators, forklifts, tractors, boats, you name it. They are legendary in the engine world. So on this side, it's really dealing with everything going into the engine, if you will, things like fuel and water. On this side, it's almost everything that's coming out of the engine, water, oil, after it's cooled down and exhaust. This component here is really important. It's called the forward mounted heat exchanger. It's sort of like a radiator on a car. It supplies water to cool down the engine and the oil that runs through it. We'll come back to this part in a bit. So the boys got to work, which involved trying to move around a very awkward space. Down behind the couch, in the front where the fuel tanks are, at the back where the raw water and gearbox transmission is. It was a task to trace everything from the start of how the engine works and checking absolutely everything. Not what you want to see with a heat exchanger. Completely corroded. That's the oil cooler running off it. You can see just how corroded all of this is. Uh, and this sits on top of the header. Uh, this is the header tank. It's upside down at the moment. So you can see how corroded that is. That sits on top and the thermostat is underneath. So what we're going to try and do is, uh, is just fill this with some aluminium and then glue it with uh, epoxy uh, steel, epoxy um, that's uh, specifically made for uh, metals. It'll take 24 hours. Now, so the reason why we're trying to just do all of this is because this particular part uh, to buy uh, new, it's pretty hard to find them reconditioned actually, is, is really expensive. We're talking about probably about 2,000 US dollars for a new one of this. And, and right now we don't know if the entire motor is, uh, is actually viable. So, so we're trying to get this done so we can, uh, over the next couple of days, uh, get the motor up and running, do some uh, compression tests and uh, oil pressure tests just to see if the if the engine is is worthwhile investing in uh, any further because uh, you know certainly we start doing this sort of stuff uh, you know, it doesn't take long and we start uh, getting close to you know getting a new motor sort of thing. Nobody's cutting a piece. And we'll see how we go. So we were just going over the hydraulics, make sure all the steering works, and uh, you know, checking leaks, fluid up. And I happened to see a little blue thing poking out from the corner, and lo and behold, I lifted up the top, and sitting under here was the entirely new 
or refurbished heat exchanger that I just spent all night looking for. It's just ridiculous. So with that amazing amount of luck, the boys quickly finished getting everything new required onto the engine and the moment of truth had arrived. But will it actually start? New Frankenstein bastardized multicolored engine. All right, we ready? We ready. We checked. Ready? We're all good. All right, we're good. Okay, we'll fire it up. Starting? Let's go. Awesome. Oh. Look at that. No smoke. Nothing. Water is coming out. Huh? The gear is in, yeah. Even Robbie was really surprised at just how smooth this golden beast was. And now, it was just a matter of bringing her up to temperature so we could do the pressure test and keep an eye on the fluids. I can't tell you how happy I was just to hear her purr away like that. And clearly with the engine being that old and needing some parts swapped out, all in all, this was a real testament to the fact that obviously, old George had taken really good care of her. So it's been an amazing week. I've got lots of stuff done. Um, I haven't been able to film as much uh, as I'd like to, but there's, there's just too many things happening at the same time, lots of people in and out. Um, but certainly working on the engine was uh, was amazing and getting that sorted out. Um, finding the finding the heat exchanger under the bed, it's always the, the last place you look, I guess. Um, that was a, a, an amazing lucky, uh, lucky find. Uh, but getting a new, uh, you know, uh, oil changer, heat exchanger onto the gearbox, new uh, belts, new uh, hoses, uh, filters, impeller, checking the fuel system, all of those things coming together. And of course, you know, starting the engine up and getting over four bar of pressure and no smoke and the engine just purring is, uh, was just, just phenomenally great. Um, I, was, I was so, you know, just so pleased about it. Uh, a couple of days ago, I uh, had a diver come along and uh, and scrape everything off the boat. Um, young chap came along, uh, you know, and there's there's things that grow on the bottom of boats here that scientists still haven't even sort of you know categorised. It, it was it, it was just pretty awful. Um, but that guy did an amazing job, cleaned the boat, cleaned the bottom of it, uh, the propeller, uh, the shaft, the rudder, uh, you know, all around the waterline, and he got through the um, the bow thruster as well. There was a was a family of some sort of crustaceans living inside of that, uh, you know. So, uh, so it was great. Uh, the bow thruster now works, so that's another big ticket item that works. Uh, and it's all of these things adding up, and it makes a real difference between, you know, a project boat that you know is very hard to justify doing to a to a boat that actually really just needs some love. So, uh, so lots of big things uh, working and, and really going my way. I'm uh, I'm absolutely over the moon. Um, I've got to uh, move a uh, switch from the bow thruster up to the helm, or get that sort of thing working. Um, we did the propulsion test once we got the uh, propeller sorted. Uh, there's a small uh, bend in the shaft. Uh, it's not that bad. The stuffing box also has a tiny little leak. Um, certainly fine for us to, to, to get up to Thailand. Um, I'm rushing about because I've got to try and leave here in about three days at the very latest. 
uh, to get into uh, into the creek for the boatyard. There's a spring high tide, uh, and if I miss that window, then I'm going to have to wait until the start of next month before uh, we can go up and do it. Um, so what else did we get done? Uh, the nav stuff, yeah? Uh, I got some nav stuff working. The world's oldest VHF radio still works. Uh, phenomenally great uh, and really pleased about that. I managed to get the AIS uh, up and running. It's a legal requirement in Thailand to have uh, functioning uh, AIS. And I got the depth sounder working, which is uh, more important uh, for this particular trip than, you know, log speed and all of those other things. Um, so yeah, depth is, uh, is working as well. And just a ton of little things that you've got to get done before I could get out of here. Uh, things like, you know, making sure I've got flares that are in date. Uh, you know, the good old uh, fire extinguisher uh, over there. She needs to either be serviced or replaced. Um, and then we are looking at setting up a day tank system for the fuel. Uh, I didn't want to... Uh, have to drain the tanks here and try and clean all the sediment out. So I'm going to set up a day tank system just for the trip. Uh, so I'm going to get that done. Uh, what else we got on the cards? Um, well, now I get to clean this hovel. Uh, inside the pilot house, obviously, is an absolute mess. Uh, there was no point doing it until we'd finished the um, finished the engine, but it's an embarrassingly messy scenario at the moment. Uh, so also, I get to um, to be able to uh, you know stow. Uh, everything in, in preparation for uh, for leaving. One of the bigger things left to uh, get sorted out is the uh, insurance. It's a requirement to have insurance here in Malaysia to leave the country uh, as well. And so that is, you know, it, it's a pain. Uh, marine insurance is a pain at the best of times. So trying to get that sorted out as quickly as possible, that's probably the last big thing that's got to be done. Uh, getting out of here with the Harbour Master is going to be a little bit tricky because uh, uh, old George lived here for so long, he, he didn't have a check-in card and so uh, I need some local help to sort of smooth over the, the Harbour Master and let me, uh, you know, let me get out of here so uh, I'll get that sorted out. What else we got to do? Uh, change the, uh, the shackle on the primary anchor um, so we can sort of make sure that's, uh, that's there in an emergency scenario if we've got to anchor up in the river for a little bit. But all in all, everything uh, really starting to come together. Um, I've, I've just had a phenomenal week, you know, met some amazing people here. It's, it's the same all over the world. One of the best things about the sailing community is, is the willingness of everybody to help each other out uh, and really made some, some, some great friends here and had some astonishingly great uh, fun nights, especially the entertainment side has been, been fantastic. Uh, but I've got to keep pressing ahead uh, to uh, to get out of here, so uh, yeah, I better get on with it. The next day I got straight into putting together the day tank system which consisted of three large drums of diesel. That should be more than enough to get us up to Thailand. Okay, so here's the three drums of fuel. I just want to sort of uh, dry fit them in there and and see uh, how we were looking. Um, it's not too bad. Uh, I don't think they're going to move around that much. I'll probably still uh, figure out a way to, uh, to to tighten them down. So what I've got to do is this uh, this raycore here is is the one that is uh, the uh, primary fuel filter that is feeding the engine. This one uh, over here is uh, being used for. Uh, um, the generator which isn't in use um, so we've you know taken the squeeze bulb off um, and what I'm going to do is is take this off here just below the squeeze bulb so I still got that ability to prime using it there's a, a hose connection there with the clamp so I'm going to take that off um, and I'm going to run that tube uh, straight in through the top here <coughs> what I need to also then do is this is the is the return line so the fuel is returning from the engine uh, I'm gonna uh, turn this off um, so fuel is not emptying into uh, into these tanks and um, if I trace this line all the way down it, it goes back as the return line uh, into uh, this tank and there's a little uh, T section under there so I'm just gonna uh, tap that one off and then I can run 
uh, I can run this primary hose uh, back into the same uh, master day tank, if you will. So uh, I've got uh, the primary fuel is uh, is coming in through uh, the Raycor, and uh, and I've got the overflow, the feedback from the engine going into uh, to the main engine. The next task was thinking about how to top the centre drum up with fuel while we are underway. While it could be done with a simple fuel funnel, the challenge is that if the sea state is rough and the boat is bouncing all over the place, it's going to be pretty tough to get the job done. So I picked up a little fuel pump and wired that into an existing power circuit. After I finished moving the bow thruster switch up to the helm, she was ready for a mini shakedown trip. It was amazing to finally get her out of the slip and onto the water for a few hours. We just motored along at a steady pace, testing forward and reverse gears, checking fluids and temperatures and pressure and leaks. There was a few little niggles here and there but as far as I was concerned, this was a big success. So coming up next week, we finally start making our way over to Thailand. But once we're there, how hard will it be to get the boat up on the hard? Thanks for sticking around. Remember to leave a thumbs up if you've liked this video. We'll see you next week.